Envisioneer has the flexibility to design and frame buildings in many different manners. In this lesson, we will look at pole barns and how to frame and design them efficiently. We will start by reviewing the framing settings and then set up a configuration to use with our Shed Builder wizard to automate the pole barn design. To start, select File, New. Select the pole barn construction template. A new drawing has started. Select File, Catalogs, Library Manager. In the Library Manager, select Libraries, Framing Libraries, Wall Framing Infill. Scroll through the list of available framing infills until you see the Poles 8 foot on center option. Select this, right click, and select Edit Wall Infill Configuration. Select the Infill Properties folder in the Members list. Here you can set up the layout of the poles. First, the spacing. Second, the interference setting. What happens when a pole is to be placed exactly where another wall intersects that wall? Do you remove the pole or do you set it beside the intersection? Third, the poles can extend past the top and bottom plates of the wall using projection settings. This is a great way to have the pole be a continuous pole from below grade to the top of the wall. Fourth, the generate end stud settings are also important for pole barn framing. Automatically, Envisioneer will place a pole or stud at each corner. If you don't want it to have the end or beginning pole, you can remove this in the settings here. To the left of the dialog box, select the bottom plate in the members list. We have eliminated the bottom plate for this infill. We will create a grade board later. Click on the stud member in the list. Note that when you choose the stud member in the list, these members are highlighted in the diagram in the preview window at the right of the dialog box. You can also rotate this diagram in the preview window by left clicking your mouse button and moving your mouse around, much as you would in a 3D viewing mode in the model workspace. Again, the associated parameters of the stud member will appear to the right. In the general category, the name stud could be changed to post or any other usage name if this best matches your shipment lists. You can also change any of the other parameters under the other categories, such as quantity info, position along wall, position front to back. Select blocking in the members list. We have set up three default pieces of blocking for this infill configuration. The two truss supports at the top of the wall truss support and truss support 2. We also have strapping. Again, you'll notice that as you choose these different members, they become highlighted in the diagram in the preview window at the right of the dialog box. Each of these blocking members has their own unique settings to place them vertically and horizontally in the wall. These individual settings can be adjusted if you need to make changes to them, or even if you wish to add additional members. Let's do this now as an example to specify a grade board. With a blocking member selected in the members list, select the new button in the middle of the dialog box. This will add a new blocking member to the list. In the parameters to the right, change the name of the new member to grade board. In the parameters, set the Use Member From setting to Member Library. In the Catalog Access dialog box that appears, select a treated 2x8 from your local catalog. Note that the member parameter is now changed to reflect this. In the Rotation parameter, change the rotation to 90 degrees by manually entering this number on the keyboard. Click on the Usage parameter and set the usage to Gradeboard. Note, if you do not have the grade board usage available in the list, you will have to right click in the list and add usage. Alternately, you can select Edit Add Usage. Set the phase to wall framing. Change the break at stud option to No. Set the position bottom to top settings to From Bottom Plate for the position. We want it offset 4 inches from the bottom so change initial offset accordingly. Set the spacing to 0 inches. We only need one. Set the position front to back parameters to front to back for the alignment and a 0 inch offset. Since the truss supports and grade board will act as the top and bottom plates, we don't need to add any further options. 
Click OK to accept the new infill configuration. Envisioneer has design wizard tools that automate the process of creating certain elements, like a shed. We will use the Shed Builder wizard to create a pole barn, but first we have to create a configuration for a pole barn to be used in the Shed Builder wizard. Staying in the Library Manager, select Libraries, Shed Configuration. The existing configurations are listed in the top list, and the associated materials for the configurations are listed below. In the Configurations list, right-click and select Add Configuration. Enter the name Pole Barn for the new configuration you've created. Each element will now require a catalog element. Highlight Wall and then click the Select button. In the Catalog Choices of Walls, find the Pole Barn wall in the Custom folder and click OK. For the roof, select a default choice you want to use and click OK. Now highlight the floor and click Select. Select a floor material and click OK. Next, highlight the door and click Select. Choose a door and click OK. Lastly, highlight the window option and click Select. Find a window and click OK. Every element must have a specified catalog element or the shed configuration will not work. Click OK to exit the Library Manager. Next, you will create a pole barn using the new configuration and the Shed Builder Wizard. To do so, select Insert Design Wizards Shed Builder, or click the down arrow next to the Design Wizards button on the Building Toolbar and select Shed Builder. This option lets you specify the sizes and styles for the walls, roof, floor, doors, and windows for a pole barn by completing a few dialog boxes. The first screen is a welcome screen. Click Next. Now select a style of pole barn from the four standard styles. Once you have selected the style, enter the building's length and width in the building size area of the dialog box. For this example, I will use 48 feet for the length and 32 feet for the width. When you're finished, click Next. In this dialog, you can specify your door and window configuration for the front and sides of your pole barn. For this example, I'm going to select the front appearance option with a single door. Once you're done, click Next. Select Pole Barn for your shed configuration and the associated elements that you chose earlier when setting up the pole barn configuration will be listed below under Shed Elements. You can change any of the components by selecting the corresponding button which will take you back to the catalog to choose an alternative element. Click Next once you have made your final selections. The final dialog is your last opportunity to click back and change any of your selections. Once you click Finish, the pull barn will be created. Click Finish. Left click to place the attached pull barn onto the drawing screen area. Now that the pull barn is inserted, let's have a look in 3D. Select the 3D camera button 3D perspective or go to View 3D cameras 3D perspective in the top toolbar. Use the fly around tool to get the view how you like it. Notice that there is no wall infill below the gable roof. To change this, we need to adjust our wall properties. Select the front wall. Right click and select Properties. In the Walls dialog that opens, select the top and bottom tab. In the wall top area of the dialog, change the radio button selection from Level to Auto Extend. Click OK. Notice that below the gable roof is now filled in. So, let's have a look at the framing we have created. First, select 3D Quick View by clicking on the button at the bottom of the screen. 
or select View 3D Quick View in the top toolbar. Now let's turn on the framing. Select Display Framing by clicking on the button in the View Navigation toolbar and choosing this option from the drop down menu, or select View Framing Display Framing from the top toolbar. In this view, we can see two things. One, the back wall of the pole barn has no wall infill below the gable roof. And two, there is currently no framing specified for the roof. First, let's fix the back wall. Go to 2D Plan View. Turn Framing Mode off by choosing Display All But Framing by clicking on the button in the View Navigation toolbar and choosing this option from the drop-down menu, or select View Framing Display All But Framing. Select the back wall of the pole barn. Right-click and choose Properties. In the top and bottom tab, set the wall top to Auto Extend. Click OK. Next, we'll specify the roof framing. First, select the roof by clicking on the dashed line indicating the roof overhang. Right-click and select Properties. In the Support and Details tab, set the support type to Rafter. Now, return to the Basics tab. At the bottom of the dialog, below the Parameters pane, select Specify Framing. In the Roof Framing dialog that appears, you can set the options for your framing members. You can choose sizes for the rafters, opening header, fascia, ridge, hip, valley, and gable. For each of these types of framing members, we also need to change the Include in Framing setting to Yes. Lastly, if you want, you can change the spacing of the rafters. Once you have finished making any adjustments to the roof framing, click OK. Activate Display Framing. You can now see in this 2D plan view that framing has been added to the roof. Let's go to 3D Quick View to have a look at the changes we've made in 3D. Our roof framing is specified and complete, and the back wall framing now extends up to meet the gable roof. Let's turn the floor back on using the view filter. It was hidden in display framing mode because it is a concrete slab. The pole barn is now complete. If you wanted, you could now add further elements such as interior walls, windows, doors, a deck, or a covered porch to personalize the pole barn. To learn how you can document this pole barn with individual framing diagrams, be sure to watch our wall panel diagrams tutorial video.